Good afternoon, Lincoln. So great to have you here. Welcome to Nebraska Family Alliance on this beautiful March 1st. Spring's coming, isn't it? It's a beautiful day. My name is Karen Bulling, and I serve as the Executive Director at Nebraska Family Alliance. Both I and Nate Gross, our Policy Director, will make brief comments and then we'll open up to any questions from the press. March 1st is a historical day in Nebraska. It's Statehood Day. <laughs> One hundred and fifty-five years ago today, Nebraska became the 37th state to enter the Union in this great United States of America. Our preamble before our Nebraska Constitution states, We, the people, grateful to Almighty God for our freedom, do ordain and establish the following Declaration of Rights and frame of government as the Constitution of the State of Nebraska. The Declaration of Independence reminds us, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That's why we're here today. Freedom is an essential part of the American experience, and every person should be treated with dignity and respect. Absolutely. We are grateful to Lincoln City Charter that provides a due process to initiate a referendum. On February 15th, Nebraska Family Alliance launched a repeal effort to collect the 4,137 needed signatures of registered Lincoln voters in 15 days. The people of Lincoln have responded and you were part of that process and we are grateful. The NFA team submitted petitions to the city clerk at 10 a.m. this morning. Overlooking the clerk's office is a picture of our city namesake, President Abraham Lincoln, which states, with public sentiment, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed. Today is about due process, to give a voice to Lincoln residents who love their city and love their neighbors. Volunteers, which many of you are here and many are not, but we are so grateful. We thank you because of your labor of love as volunteer petition circulators. Today, we submitted to the city clerk 1,365 petitions with 18,501 individual signatures. By 339 volunteer petition collectors. That's more than four times the needed signatures to repeal the ordinance. The process has begun to validate signatures. Joining us today for the press, these are many of the circulators behind you. What I think is a beautiful picture of the city of Lincoln, these petitions were circulated in every area of the city every demographic, north, south, east, west, and downtown. 
by every age group and represented by a diverse group of people, including 72 churches. Slavic, wow. Slavic, Ukrainian, Vietnamese, and Spanish-speaking congregations of both Protestant and Catholic denominations participated. Our friends from the Islamic Center also signed petitions, as well as Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. This has been a nonpartisan initiative that also included people of different perspectives. Both proponents and opponents to the ordinance signed petitions because they believe the gravity of the issue should go to the vote of the people or the city council should rescind their decision. In 2012, an initiative where we had 10,000 signatures took place. What you need to know, regardless of what the city council to chooses to do, once the 4,137 signatures are validated, the ordinance is inactive. Moms, dads, Grandparents walk their neighborhoods with their kids to give them first-hand experience of grassroots mobilization because they believe that the government shouldn't pick and choose who is allowed to think and speak freely and who isn't. And they love the people of Lincoln. Circulators donated their time and collected signatures at the dog park the bike show, Lancaster Event Center, coffee shops, neighborhoods. Today exemplifies that people of Lincoln believe that every person should be treated with kindness, dignity, and respect. Today is about the good of our neighbor and recognizing disagreement does not mean discrimination. Today is about protecting freedom in the marketplace. It benefits our business communities too. Once again, I am so grateful for your engagement. And before I give the podium to Nate, I want to share something that happened to me. We were so busy getting signatures that actually I came down to help. And before me was a Ukrainian woman. I did not even know there was an Ukrainian church here. We had a wonderful conversation. And I asked her why she came. And with tears in her eyes, she said, America and the city of Lincoln is where I want to be because I once lived where the government told me how I needed to think, and I am so grateful. This is a broad, diverse, volunteer effort for which I am grateful. Thank you, thank you, volunteers, and please welcome Nate Gross. Thank you all so much for being here. This is a beautiful day in Lincoln, Nebraska. So why are we here? Why did more than 300 people volunteer their time to circulate this petition? Why did over 18 and a half thousand voters sign this petition in two weeks? Because our city council chose politics over people and advanced an ordinance that punishes free speech and violates the safety and privacy of women and girls in Lincoln. Let's be clear, no one here today opposes fairness. If you look beyond the platitudes and empty political statements from our city council, you will find an ordinance that is simply poorly written, overly broad, and makes our city less fair. And that's what we want to explain today, what this ordinance actually does as opposed 
to just what the city council says it does. The ordinance redefines the term sex to mean male, female, neither, or both, including sexual orientation and gender identity. By claiming to prohibit discrimination based on this new definition of sex, the ordinance opens up bathrooms and locker rooms to men who self-identify as women and vice versa. If someone identifies as female, you must give them access to private spaces designed for women or it's discrimination. This applies not only to employment and housing, but to all places of public accommodation. The ordinance defines public accommodations incredibly broadly as to entail virtually all places outside of your own home, including churches and private schools. And there is no religious exemption in the ordinance under the definition of public accommodations. It is, however, worth noting that while there is no religious exemption, the city council removed places that are funded by the government from the definition of public accommodations. So the ordinance applies to private schools, but not public schools, and in private businesses, but not in city buildings. But this ordinance is much more and much worse than just a bathroom bill. The ordinance also defines sexual harassment as any action, including speech, that has the effect of creating an intimidating or hostile or offensive environment in employment, housing, and public accommodations. This means you could be liable for an illegal act simply for expressing biblical or traditional views on marriage and human sexuality, or for not using someone's preferred pronouns if it causes someone else to feel offended. And who gets to determine if someone is guilty of violating this ordinance? An unelected commission with the authority to levy fines up to $10,000 for a first offense, $25,000 for a second offense, and $50,000 for any subsequent offense. All of this raises more than a few questions. If the city council believes that this ordinance is good and fair for our city, why did they remove city buildings from public accommodation? Why did they exempt themselves but not churches? Why, after they received over 400 emails in opposition to this ordinance from citizens raising these concerns, did they insist on moving forward instead of listening to and addressing the legitimate concerns of their constituents? And finally, do they know and agree with what this ordinance actually does, or did they just not know what was in their own ordinance? We will always treat all people with kindness and respect and advocate for their human dignity, regardless of who they are or what they believe. This petition is about opposing an unjust ordinance that will harm our neighbors and our city. Disagreement is not discrimination. We are a nation where you should be allowed to disagree without the threat of having your own government shut down your business, your nonprofit, or your church for the, grunt, for the crime of disagreeing with the ideology of those who are in political power. We need to get back to having real conversations instead of these politically motivated ordinances that are used to divide our city and coerce uniformity of thought and speech. Over 18 and a half thousand voters in Lincoln have now spoken, and it's time for the city council to rescind this ordinance or let the people vote. Thank you, Nate. Um, at this time, if there are any questions from the press, Nate and I will be glad to answer.